Hello again from Digicore Things. With my first minimalist Europe card bus CPU card finally completed, to my satisfaction, next up is my Motorola based IO card, which will finally enable a complete modular 6809 based system. In fact, I've now completed my initial design, which also contributed a couple of recent videos, as I finalised the ACIA board rate generator in the interrupt driver components of the design. The Motorola based IO card includes a MC6850 asynchronous communications interface adapter, ACIA, a MC6821 peripheral interface adapter, PIA, and also an MC6840 programmable timer module, PTM. In addition, I've added an optional sound interface via a SN76489 digital complex sound generator, interfaced via a PIA port. The schematic and PCB layout for the initial prototype have been completed, and the first prototype PCBs have just arrived. But first, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's take a look at the schematic. Once again, this was based on the MECB KiCad template that I'd initially designed to make the design of subsequent boards easier and consistent. So as with my other boards, I started off with the MECB connector and addressed a code PLD already defined in the schematic and laid out on the PCB. As always, very helpful. Adding the Motorola peripheral chips was straightforward, with each connecting up to a PLD chip select output. Next was the board rate generator for the MC6850 ACIA, which I covered in detail in an earlier video. Then, also covered in an earlier video, is the optional programmable timer module non maskable interrupt driver. This allows a monitor that implements it, such as a Systo 9, to support single stepping of your code and the setting of breakpoints to allow easy onboard code debugging. Finally, I've used a port of the PIA to optionally interface to a SN76489 sound generator. It's optional as I've also brought out all of the PIA port pins to a connector. So if the sound is not desired, you can simply not insert a sound generator chip, so both PIA ports are available for external use. So let's now take a look at the PCB layout. Everything fits quite tidily on the just under 100mm square standard MECB card size, including connectors for all the I.O. connections. This includes, on the board edge, first a 24-pin right-angle male IDC connector, bringing out all 20 I.O. pins of the PIA. We also have a 6-pin FTDI standard TTL serial connection for the ACIA. And finally, a 3.5mm audio out jack. In addition, on the board we also have a 12-pin male IDC connector to bring out the 9 optional interface pins of the PTM. Finally, there is the single jumper for connecting the optional PTM non maskable interrupt connection. And of course, we also have the four way dual in line switch for the ACIA serial board rate selection. So now let's take a look at the manufactured prototype PCBs that have just arrived from JLC PCB. Get this out of the way. Right. Here is the solder side. Let's get that in focus. And here is the component side. So 
So let's get our first one assembled. For assembly, I start off with the bypass capacitors and the two resistors. Then I soldered in the IC sockets, including the 8 pin IC socket that I've modified for the crystal oscillator, as explained in earlier videos. I then also soldered in the TO92 MOSFET and the 2 pin header for the PTM non maskable interrupt connection. Then the 3.5mm audio connector and the right angle header for the TDL serial interface. Then the four-way dual line switch for the board rate selection. Then the audio output capacitor and the two IDC I.O. connectors. Finally, the male DIN 41612 MECB bus connector, which is secured in place with a couple of 10mm M2.5 bolts. The board assembly completed it's time to get some ICs inserted. So let's start with the 74HCT393 board rate divider. Then the three Motorola peripheral chips. Let's start with the ACIA. That's the 6850. Then the 6840 programmable timer module and finally the PIA chip the MC6821 And the 76489 sound generator. And the 4.9152 MHz crystal oscillator. Finally, We'll need to program a PLD for the desired addresses for the peripheral chips. As I'll initially use the same Assist09 monitor that I was using on my 80s YRAP 6809 card, I'll define the I.O. address space on the CPU card as E000 to E0FF. And the three Motorola peripheral ICs will be allocated an 8-byte address space each starting at the I.O. addresses 00, 08 and 10. So this will give us the following device addresses. The 6840 PTM will be at E000. The 6850 ACIA will be at E008. And the 6821 PIA will be at E010. So let's get that set up in the PLD. If you want to know more about the minimalist Europe card bus use and programming of the ATF 16 V8 PLD, then I recommend viewing my earlier video covering the MECB address decode and glue logic. So here is our WinCUPL definition for our IO card PLD. First, the standard header and the input pin assignments. Then, if I page down, you can see the three chip select output pin assignments. These are all as per the standard PLD usage that I defined for my minimalist Europe card bus.
peripheral cards. Finally, there is the three lines of logic equations defining the chip select output logic. Pretty straightforward. I've then used WinCUPL to compile that source file into the required .jed file for programming the PLD chip via my TL866 programmer. And here is the program PLD, which we'll now insert into a higher card. For an initial test, I'm going to use the same Motorola Assist 09 monitor that I was using in my original 80s Wireapp CPU card. This will test both the ACIA and PTM operation, as both are used by Assist 09. So first I'll install the NMI jumper to enable the PTM output to trigger a non-maskable interrupt of the CPU. Then I'll program the original 2KB Assist09 monitor code into the top 2KB of a 28C256 flash ROM. And I'll insert that ROM into our 6809 CPU card. So I'll take out the existing ROM, which was the one with the test code for the video display card. And this is the ROM programmed with Assist09. So I'll insert that into the CPU card. Finally, we check the CPU card DIL switch is correctly set up for the I/O address space allocation of E00 to E0FF, which is simply the bottom three switches are off, meaning that A15 to A13 are pulled high. The remainder of the switches are on, uh, pulling A12 to A8 low. So it is of course already set up for this I address space. As I recall we used this same address block for the TMS9929 video card, which was allocated an 8 byte IO space starting at IO address 80, so effectively at a memory address of E080. This also means that I can just use the existing video card alongside our new IO card without any changes needed to avoid any address space allocation conflicts. So with that all done, we're ready for our first Motorola IO card test. Right, for the test, I'll first connect up the serial port to a TTL USB adapter. So we've got ground and transmit and receive. I'll also jump across the clear to send input uh, to a ground pin because we're not using any hardware handshaking. And I'll also configure the board rate to 9600 for our first test. Right, let's run TerraTerm bring that in and I'll plug in the USB connection with that sorted out I'll now insert the CPU card into the back plane and the IO card as well next to the video card Bring that a little bit closer. Now let's apply power and see what happens. Plug in the 5 volts and here goes. Okay, we've got something. Looks like I haven't set the board rate correctly in TerraTerm. Yes, it was not. It was set to 38400. Let me just change it back to 9600. I'll clear the screen 
and let's add reset. Right, we're in business. This is Sysdo 9. That was easy. Okay, well, I might actually put TerraTerm back to 38400 and I'll turn it back off. Take out the IO card and let's just change the dip switch setting from 9600 board to 38400. and plug it back in. Let's apply power again and we have a sustain iron at 38400 board. So that tests the ACIA section of our new IO board. To test the programmable time module and the NMI interrupt we can verify that the breakpoint and single stepping functionality of the Assisto 9 monitor is working correctly. To test this, I'll transfer the simple Hello World program that I demonstrated during an earlier video, which covered firing up my old 80s YRAP Homebrew 6809 board. You'll find a link to that video in the description. This earlier video also demonstrates the operation and the available commands of the Assisto 9 monitor, so I won't repeat that here. So I'll first issue the L load command to a Sysdo 9. Then I'll send the assembled hello world .s19 file to our CPU card. This short program was assembled into memory location 0. So if I display memory address 0000, 000 to 001F you can see the program is present. And if I call the program with C0, we can see it run and display the expected hello world. Now to first test that breakpoints are working. So I'll set a breakpoint for address 0 so that our program should immediately stop before executing the first instruction. So B0. Then if we call the program again with C0, we see our breakpoint has worked. We have stopped with the program counter at 0000. Now I'll set the stack trace level to the current stack pointer value with the S command. Now we can try a single step using the period command. And we look good. The program counter is now pointing at address 0003, which is the second instruction. The first instruction was 308C, which loaded the X register with the effective address of our Hello World string at address 0008. And we can single step the rest of the program until we return from subroutine to the monitor. So breakpoints and single stepping are verified working. We have now verified our ACIA, PTM and NMI interrupt driver are all successfully working. This just leaves our PIA and sound chip, which I'll need to write some test code for. For now, I think we'll call it for today. With our Motorola IO card version 1.0, looking like a success. At least I now have a modular, minimalist Europe card bus based 6809 system that updates my original 80s wire app card with a fully configurable memory map and has currently configured a full 56 kilobytes of RAM, a TMS9929 video card and, subject to final testing, a PIA with a sound generator to complete a nice little retro 8-bit system Next, I might explore a different CPU card, but until then. That's it. Thanks for watching.